Hello, my name is Dr. Dean Smith, and today's topic is diffuse idiopathic hyperostosis, also known as DISH. This is a very common disorder of unknown etiology that is characterized by back pain and stiffness. Radiographically, it is defined by non-marginal syndesmophytes at four levels, or bone spurs connecting four different vertebral bodies. It is an extremely common condition. In the general population, it is about 12%. It is uncommon before the age of 50, and by the time you hit 50, there's a 25% chance that you will have DISH. Keeping in mind that it is twice as common in males as in females until you hit the age of 80, when the incidence is about equal, and the incidence at 80 is about 30% in the general population. It can occur any place in the spine, but the most common place is in the thoracic spine, and it occurs most commonly on the right side of the thoracic spine. The second most common place is in the cervical spine, and the least most common place is in the lumbar spine. If you look at the cervical and lumbar spine, the bone spurs occur equally on the left and the right side. As I mentioned, in the thoracic spine, it's mostly the right side. Risk factors for developing DISH include, of course, being male. Gout, hyperlipidemia, and diabetics have a higher incidence of DISH. Some of the conditions which can be associated with DISH include in the lower back and the lumbar spine, lumbar spinal stenosis, and in the neck, it can be associated with bone spurs large enough to produce difficulties such as difficulty swallowing, which is known as dysphagia, hoarseness, sleep apnea, or it can produce cervical stenosis, which is known as myelopathy. Because DISH produces a very stiff and a very brittle spine, Fractures can result in an instability problem, a very unstable spine. So you have a long, stiff spine with one area that's broken, and there's motion at that area, then it's very easy to damage the underlying nervous tissue or cord and produce paralysis. If an individual has a history of a very stiff neck and injures his neck and suddenly has increased mobility, that can be a scary situation because it indicates probably an underlying very unstable fracture. One of the things that surgeons worry about with DISH is seemingly minor low injuries, low impact injuries resulting in a unstable fracture. So many times patients with, uh, with DISH will be admitted to the hospital for observation just to make sure they don't have instability. Most of these patients don't present, um, given the fact that the majority of these patients uh, have a little bit of underlying uh, back pain, stiffness, um, but it's not severe enough to go to the physician. 25% of the population above the age of 50 has it, but all those people don't go to the doctor. They will typically present to a physician if they have more severe pain or more severe stiffness. Now, in the cervical spine, sometimes these patients will present, as I mentioned, because they have difficulty breathing, swallowing, changes in their voice. I will see them many times after they've seen a gastroenterologist for difficulty swallowing, and they've determined that it has to do with a bone spur in the neck. Many times, these bone spurs can become large enough that they will need to be removed surgically. The diagnosis of DISH is made very easy. It's usually made from a simple x-ray, and the most common x-ray is a chest x-ray, and it's usually found um, incidentally in an asymptomatic patient, in which case no treatment is required, though we may do some education for that individual, and the most important education is to have them watch this video. Kidding. If a patient suddenly has more pain or more motion, uh, that may be an indication for a more advanced imaging studies such as an MRI or a CT. The most common treatment for DISH is non-operative. It usually involves activity modification, physical therapy, possibly bracing uh, in more severe cases, and we usually use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. In some cases, the physician may prescribe what's known as bisphosphonates. For example, patients who have had hip replacements are at increased risk 
for heterotopic ossification if they have a history of DISH. DISH can result in a very calcified total joint, a very calcified hip that may not function very well. In this case, the physician may prescribe bisphosphonates or other more advanced me medications to um, decrease the amount of heterotopic ossification. I hope this video has answered some of your questions regarding DISH. It's an extremely common condition that I see all the time and I'm always getting questions about and I'm sure that's going to continue. But hopefully this video has answered many of your questions and possibly has alleviated some of your concerns. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Send us an email if you have any other topics that you'd like to hear about or leave that on the message board below. And once again, thank you very much.